Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of my mod spotlight on big reactors. So, I'm sorry for cutting off the last episode, you know, suddenly saying this was the end, but that was the ending time for the episode, so this should be the, the last and final episode of our spotlight. So let's get into it. So, as if you remember, we were making this as efficient as possible, so what we can do is I'm just going to decrease that to zero so the steam flow rate is now zero and we have four blades so I'm just going to hold shift and click and I don't see the efficiency is 100 so if we begin to put it a bit higher as you can see that this efficiency has dropped to 94.3 percent saying that we're wasting some of the steam so this is going in there but it's being wasted so what we need to do is decrease that slightly so there we go so we're now efficient if we go with 124. That's when we're most efficient. And now, if you want to get this reactor going really, really quick, what you can do is you can disengage the ch coils as these allow the reactor to get faster and faster as these cause friction and stop it from. Because these are called coils, by the way. And these stop it from getting up to very high temperatures or high speeds. Engage them again, and as you can see, you get a really big buffer of energy. This thing is generating 3000 RF per tick but it's dropping very quickly as the rotor speed's dropping down. Now if I just deactivate the turbine and I just go through this ludicrous block here I'm just gonna get myself these rotor blades. So these rotor blades um, the more you have the more efficient it will be and you're probably going to want to make the reactor a little bit bigger than I did. You know, perhaps more shafts and stuff like that to make the reactor a bit more worthwhile. But this is just the spotlight of the mod, so I, I couldn't really see much of a point in doing that. So if I turn this on now, we can actually allow more and more steam into the reactor before it becomes ineffective. So there you go. We can allow it to up to 220. I believe 224 is the maximum. So on how this bedrocking drum's doing. Seven million water. Wow. So as you can see, it's this it's spinning at a moderate speed now. And if I disengage the coils and I say ramp this up to a really high amount of steam going in there, I can see its efficiency is actually climbing. And you're probably wondering, well how's the efficiency climbing? Well, it's getting really quick, so the steam efficiency is actually going up. And it says, R rotators kept over speed for too long may fail catastrophically. I assume by saying that it will explode. So be careful not to just let it get up to ridiculous amounts of speeds for too long. As I'm guessing it will explode. Let's say we don't actually have enough steam to keep the speed going. Although I'm unsure actually. I think this reactor is just about keeping it with demand. As you can see it is... Um, at the casing heat isn't very high, but this is this. Oh, bear in mind, these are two very small basic reactors. They can just go huge. So we're at 5,100 RPM, um, which is pretty ridiculous. And if I engage the coils now, like look how much RF we're making. We're making over 20,000 RF per tick. That was crazy. We're just like absolutely filling up this energy cell like crazy. But yeah, I'm actually gonna dis like take down this. I believe the maximum flow rate is 2000 millibuckets of steam per tick so it can't go much higher than that. I'm just going to put this up to 200 again. So guys that is sort of how you make a sort of reactor so obviously we need you know two reactors for it to really be you know, for this setup to generate power. But remember, in the early stages, just build a very small basic reactor which generates some power, and then you can then make it bigger and then make it a steam one, or you could just get a few steam boilers from Railcraft and then pipe them into here. But yeah, it just depends on what your usage is, what how much power you need, depends on how much you need to overclock these reactors. So I believe that sort of wraps it up for the episode, guys. There are f a few other things that I haven't covered yet. For example, the s re this um, 
Cyanotic Reprocessor, which I believe is used to make some of the materials. And I don't really feel that I need to show you guys this machine because you can look it up in any iron how to make all the things. So I'm not really going to show you machines that make the stuff. There are obviously creative coolant ports which infinitely supply your stuff. And there's a few other creative items that I haven't shown you guys. Also there's the blocks of all the items. You've got the plutonium um, blocks, you've got the graphite, cyanide and yellowium. So thank you for watching this mod spotlight guys on big reactors. I hope you have learnt how to use the mod and how to make stable reactors but be careful this reactor is pretty hot and I don't believe this sort of reactor can explode this one can I'm not sure I've not had a reactor that's exploded to date although I haven't ex explored this mod too much but I will definitely be playing around with this in my let's play series so expect a let's play episode coming out maybe later on today or maybe later on tomorrow so thank you for watching guys remember to, remember to like comment subscribe yeah, share your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you thought of this spotlight. Has it helped you? And if it has, leave a like rating below. And take it easy.